Um, there are a few questions about exercise, which maybe I could link to both um, John and Rosie. One was, um, does exercise affect visible blood in the urine? Um, somebody said they have blood every day, but when they exercise, it gets worse. And then the other one was saying, um, can you exercise especially high level training in, with IGA nephropathy? So exercise is well known to precipitate episodes of hematuria in patients with IGA nephropathy and a few other kidney diseases. So that's, you know, that, that's not unsurprising. Um, important to stay well hydrated when you're exercising. And uh, you can be an elite athlete and have um, IGA nephropathy. So the Don Jones, who I mentioned, played most of his NFL career having been diagnosed with IGA nephropathy. Um, so we have elite sportsmen and we have people like me who are perhaps not elite sportsmen who uh, can have a variety of diseases <laughs> that uh, you can exercise to your certain level. Um, and I think you can be an elite athlete. I know there is a, at one of the meetings, we had someone in one of the Olympic teams from the home countries who was a, a weightlifter who was talking about how they were going to get back and keep involved in, uh, in high level sport. But I think I'm going to come back to Rosie here because I think it's really important that we understand that we're not talking about running a marathon or doing, um, and I'm just trying to find Rosie here to unmute her, so excuse me while I do that, that we don't need to be thinking about elite sport necessarily and running marathons, going in the gym and looking like Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, to actually get benefit from exercise and, uh, and actually be able to do it either in a gym or as is now at home. Uh, uh, just another point to point out while in, in this discussion is um, uh, patients have often said that they're concerned when they do exercise that their blood pressure should be raised and that that might affect their kidney function so that might be something else to I think into the I, discussion. your blood pressure will go up when you exercise because your body needs more blood pumping into the muscles but that's not a necessarily a bad thing and the benefits of exercise, I think, far outweigh that, unless you have very, very badly controlled blood pressure. So again, if you're concerned, speak to your nephrologist. But um, I think the benefits of exercise outweigh uh, those changes in blood pressure. But I'm going to hand over to Rosie, because I think it's really important to stress the full range of exercise you can do um, that will be beneficial to you from day one. Um, yeah, so I, I mean, I would never... Somebody came to me and they, they said, oh, I've got this condition, what can I do? First of all, um, any good personal trainer or Pilates teacher will always want clearance and want to know that you are well enough to exercise. And as long as you're well enough to exercise, then absolutely you should be exercising. We, we I brought it up earlier on, we're designed to move, our bodies are designed to move around. Um, and the more we do of that, the more efficient our bodies are going to work for us. And it's not just the skeletal system. The skeletal system is what I predominantly deal with when I'm teaching Pilates, but it's every system in the body is going to benefit. Um, and I brought up as well earlier on that when we're in pain, um, we sometimes think, I'm in pain, I don't want to move. And that has a knock-on effect with everything and then we don't move and you end up causing yourself more more and more problems so you know i i just think for me certainly um exercise is is the key to so much I don't, you know it can help with the how you feel about yourself and how your body is working and whether it's working efficiently or not so um and yeah you don't have to run a marathon you don't have to train to run a marathon i think it's important that you find something that you enjoy because there's nothing worse than going to do exercise and feel like you're kind of oh god i've got to do this um and there's such a wide range nowadays of what you can do to keep yourself fit and healthy walking you know it's a great form of exercise you don't have to go for a run um, but obviously what pilates will do it will teach you how to um, handle your body safely in whatever form of exercise it might be that you want to go and take up because you enjoy it a little bit more 
Thanks. So, so I will put my hand up here and say the thought of exercising fills me with dread, knowing I've seen pictures of Louise, who must have run at least a half marathon, if not a full marathon. And I know Pete likes running. So I was going to ask Noel, how do you get over that? What strategies can you give for people to get over that initial reluctance to say, you know, I ache, I don't want to do it. And when I do it, I feel even worse. What kind of things, I mean, I'm, how would you approach that in terms of trying to get people up and out? Well, I think probably what the first thing I do is try and find out in some detail what people were trying and where they felt limited uh, and take a, a sort of problem solving approach. I think it's wise, as, as Rosie has said, to start with things that you enjoy um, that you might not conceive of as exercise. Let me give an example from, from uh, another area that I work in. As I say, I do a lot of work with pulmonary. Um, rehab and we're trying to think about ways in which men particularly who don't like conventional rehab for very many reasons could be introduced to things like walking football that are a bit more masculine in focus <laughs> and, and, and enjoyable well, maybe one for you <laughs> but mind you there is a very entertaining episode I think of Father Ted that uh, would, would <laughs> cause for second thoughts joking apart the one of the important, well, two important things about exercise from a psychological perspective. First of all, clearly the link with endorphins, so that sense of well-being that you get from having undertaken exercise. Um, but secondly, exercise, stuff that you enjoy, um, even in small amounts, is what psychologists term a flow activity. Now, flow activities we know, I mean, they're incorporated mainly within the sphere of mindful activity at the moment. But any form of flow activity where your mind and body are operating as, as one in something pleasant, however small it is, um, is extremely good for uh, psychological well-being. So starting small, finding things that you enjoy doing, trying to rebadge activity as non-prescriptive exercise. It is, as Rosie said, it's about keeping yourself moving um and flexible and that can be achieved in lots of different ways um give yourself small goals to begin with so you're likely to achieve them fit them into your life um take the opportunities uh, rather than trying to find time um and don't don't punish yourself reward yourself um you know for the activities you do in engage in and and review that so you might set yourself some objectives for a week review how you've got on, um, if that's gone well, great. If less well, look at some of the reasons, tweak, uh, rejig, and try and move forward the next week. Thanks. That's quite, a, there's a, a nice story related to that. So I know somebody who's doing walking football in Leicester, and he's now part of the Leicester City first team. <laughs> He's very excited. Loves Is that the it. Walking football team or the Premier League team? No, the walking football team. But he doesn't <laughs> tell people that in conversation. <laughs> can I? Can I just add one final thing? I, this is a bit of work I did donkeys years ago. I think the other thing, and it was interesting to see advertising nationally about young women and exercise, because um, this is a particularly difficult group to get engaged because of self consciousness. Um, so, you know. That's something I, mean, I don't really have time into, to, to go into it at the moment, but we can, particularly if we are uh, unwell, be very conscious, self-conscious about how our bodies are functioning. Um, and psychologists, I think, are very good at, at talking um, with us as, as patients about how we can overcome uh, concerns about what our body does and how we look. Uh, and I think, you know, we have to have much more health promotion that allows us to look um, hot, sweaty, um, you know, uh, slightly um, shambolic, and that's all right because the health benefits far outweigh how we bother to look um, at the moment. And you know, in this sort of COVID age, of course, we've we've long had to give up on how we look anyway, don't we? Given the absence of anything approximating a, a, a haircut for the last one. Was so was, my daughter did mine. <laughs> I, I wouldn't let my daughters touch mine. <laughs> 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 so I was just going to ask Louise to give a children's perspective. Normally we have to stop children running around, but I guess if you've got kidney disease, it might be a bit more of a challenge. So yeah, we don't limit um, any activities really. Um, 
we would say, usually only just for the short period after the kidney biopsy and um, when we have to stop the boys doing tackles and serious rugby games and stuff. Um, but they're usually counting down the days until they can get going again. And we certainly would encourage exercise as much as possible, encourage them in, in, to continue with their sports and everything else. Um, and, and to continue to incorporate that into a healthy lifestyle like adults should be doing really. But I think with children, there's less barriers and um, particularly the young children that they don't view it as exercise. It's fun, it's games, it's playing. Um, and, and the only time when we limit it is after the, after the biopsy um, when we say to, to limit it just because just of the risk of bleeding. Again, with the kidney transplant, then we, we try to avoid the heavy contact sports um, in those where they have had a, a transplant, but that's you know the minority of children with IJ and property. Um.